Hi everyone, Sajit Amit here and welcome to my first impressions video, which is going to be sort of a stream of consciousness, sort of a commentary on the Brise Audio Store Nagi. So in case you don't know what this is, this is this very small unit, handmade, black aluminum, very light, around 340 grams, is a portable amplifier. So a lot of you might be wondering what the heck I'm doing the portable amplifier, especially if, if, if you've seen my reviews of like massive speaker amps and stuff that I've used to drive things like the Haffman Suzvara and the Biz. This amp is made by this sort of very iconic Japanese brand. It's a premium Japanese brand, Brise Audio. Some people call it Bryce. But I have it on good authority that the pronunciation is Brise. So Brise Suranagi is a handmade amp for driving mostly IMs. It does have an output power of one watt. So it's not like you cannot drive headphones because one watt is more than enough to drive most headphones to reasonable levels of loudness and technical performance. So as you can see, I've just switched it on. The volume knob is wonderful. It increases in fine increments because I've used this. Uh, you have an input selection. You can, you have a, a, a 3.5 and a 4.4 balance input. And in terms of outputs, you have a 4.4 here and you have a 2.5. So both outputs are balanced. This LED just shows how much battery you have. And the charging is via USB cable. It's 340 grams, so it's fairly light. And its packaging was quite minimal as, you know, very Japanese. A nice sort of uh, box which opens up and gives you almost nothing except the amp. You know, a bunch of paperwork, uh, user's manual. An interesting catalog, by the way, because you might not know that Brise Audio is famous for its cables. So they make a whole variety of cables. So a lot of you who've been around this hobby for a bit of time might know the Japanese take this hobby to different levels uh, in terms of their sheer passion and, and they do spend a lot of money. The Japanese are fairly wealthy and the audio file scene there is intense. So I was talking to one Japanese distributor once about the final audio IEMs and they told me that they sold four times the number of units in Japan than they did in the US. So a lot of these Japanese brands that are more, you know, very iconic, like Mass Kobo, which is like they have this, you know, uh, uh, headphone amp, which goes for $17,000. Uh, they have IM amps as well. And then you have a, a wonderful headphones, like the final audio stuff, like might just be entering the consciousness of the American or the North American or the Western consumer. But these household names in, in Japan do plenty of great business so you know which is why when people get surprised by their price points of these cables like this why interconnect over here this interconnect i think it's called called the uh yatuno uh, interconnect that you see over here these ones i mean they cost about 1200 us dollars so you buy them if you have that level of sort of you know passion in the hobby and if you want to spend that kind of money if you have the kind of money to burn and then of course you have their you know usb cables uh, power cables and XLR interconnect. So Brise was famous for the interconnects. The Mura, they have this Murakumo technology that they have over here. So this brochure is interesting, right? Because, you know, if you didn't know and have a serial number card, they do make fancy, expensive, premium interconnects. Now, this amp was an accidental creation. They made, they wanted to make an amp with which to test their ICs, the interconnects, and voila, they ended up with this amp, which turned out to be a superb experience in audio. So then they started making it and selling it commercially, and this has now caught HeadFi by storm somewhat, especially on the more expensive or SummitFi communities, like there's a cooler, water cooler thread on HeadFi where this is pretty popular, so much so that Music Tech has sold out on this amp. A shout out to Music Tech, Andrew in particular, for his Wonderful service. I feel like the guy has given us so much in terms of, of course, selling us wonderful units, but of course, just being very present and, you know, always, you know, answering queries with a lot of intelligence, a lot of information, a lot of patience, humility, what have you. Shout out to Andrew. Shout out to Music Tech. Music Tech is a central part of my hobby, so I'm very grateful to them. I did pay full price for this. So this shout out in no way is an exchange for anything, but I do, I did want to get this in. I paid full price of $2,700. So you might be wondering, is this worth the price? I have friends I respect, audiophile friends who have had a lot of experience who think that this is overpriced. And so my perspective is that I see that point of, you know, why would this sort of amp, as small as it is with this limited sort of usability in terms of driving IMs, be so expensive? 
at the on the other end of the spectrum, I do understand the premium a master craftsman can charge. I mean, see, I'm a consultant and I have a daily rate and I can charge uh, what I think is a fairly reasonable amount of money. But in order for me to be able to charge this money, there's a lot of education that went into my, in developing my craft. I studied in you know very good schools. I worked in very good organizations globally. And now I've reached a point when I can charge a certain amount of money. So what I charge is, of course, a function of my experience and all that effort that went into building my skill set. So I do completely understand why Brice Audio is or Nagi, given the fact that the Brice Audio guys have so much experience and craftsmanship behind them. I understand the value you pay for the craftsmanship, for that quality consciousness, for that brand, for that, for that taste in tuning an amplifier, because that is what this is about. So I, for one, am not, I'm not going to sort of, you know, complain about how expensive this is, but I do understand people's perspective about this and audio is getting more and more expensive. So I do welcome people who come in and offer a perspective that tries to sort of hold manufacturers to account. That being said, I'm okay with the pricing of $2,700, particularly because I've listened to the C9 with my sources and the enhancement the C9 offers is noticeable, but this is at a different level. There is a head fire review of this that I'll link in the description of this video that says the same thing about how this is a different level from the C9. The C9 is bigger, so that should not fool you into thinking that it's more capable. The C9 just has more power. C9 goes up to three watts, I think. This goes up to one watt. But if you're driving IMs, one watt is like more than enough. And for most headphones, one watt is more than enough. You can look up all these sort of loudness calculators on the internet, which is not necessarily useful if you're driving something like Susvara because Suzuara can get loud of one watt, but then it requires a lot more juice for the more complex passages and, and stuff. But that being said, one watt is enough for 90% of stuff out there, guys. And to talk about what it sounds like, this is just a first impressions video. Yesterday, I was bi-amping the Sony W1ZM2 because that particular Sony DAB, which is my favorite, does not have a genuine line out. So I was using its 4.4 out and bi-amping it, essentially using the Brice Audio Suranagi. There were moments at night with the IM for Audio Xenon 6 when I was a bit breathless. I was not breathless because I was talking continuously like I tend to do on these reviews. I was not breathless because I was having any kind of physical complications. I don't have any issues. I realized I was breathless because the sound was so realistic. It was so realistic on this that I was breathless. I was catching my breath. Um, so again, I was using the for audio Xenon 6 uh, connected to my Sony W1ZM2. Uh, um, I'm sorry, the, my Sony W1ZM2 was connected to the Breeze, Aud Breeze Audio amplifier, the Soranagi, and my for audio Xenon 6 was connected to the 4.4 output of the Breeze. And I had breathless moments because it the Sony W1ZM2 is a laid back sounding, warm sounding, fixed sounding DAP which sounds amazing timbrely and has great wide sound stage, great uh, resolution and great slam and punch with a wonderful EQ as well. With this in the chain, the experience was a bit, and I'm not, not just a bit, I want to say substantially different because it sort of sounded like the Sony, but it sounded better in some ways, right? Because there was a blacker background uh, there's something about the presentation that made it more lifelike, like more timbre, more lower level sig signals, more uh, 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 grandiosity in the spatial presentation, more lower level signals like, you know, spatial cues coming in. And overall, experience just became a little more gripping, a little more emotional for me. So every sort of technical performance parameter you can think of, whether it's resolution, whether it's soundstage, whether it's layering, whether it's slam, whether it's tactility, whether it's timbre, it checked all the boxes. But there was an X factor to this, which just made me lose my breath a few times with this. And for that, I'm very grateful. So that's basically my review. It's a very transparent sounding unit. It's not a warm sounding unit or a bright sounding unit. It's a very transparent sounding unit. And I just felt like I was listening to good quality headphones or speakers. Amazing device, guys. I do want to spend more time with it so I can bring you a deeper, a more detailed review. And I'll talk more about specs in that review. And I'll talk about other sources that I'll have tried with this. But for now, I can tell you that it's a better 
amplifier than the C9 from Kain. And it's a better amplifier from the Hugo 2 in terms of the Hugo 2 amplification circuit because I've tried the Sony w one with the Hugo 2 as well. So that's it for me, guys. Early impressions. The Brise Audi Suronagi is $2,700. It's very expensive, but I'm loving it. And I hope to get back to you with more impressions. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you in my next one. Bye-bye.